Good day and God bless you. You are welcome to the television recording of uh, Word of Faith Ministries International coming to you from uh, the ministry facility in Miami, Florida, USA. I am Bola Olu Jordan, the pastor and director of Word of Faith Ministries International Africa, located at number 9B, Bibilari Bus Stop, Bashon Road, Idiapa, Ibadan, Nigeria. With me in the studio, is Pastor Bernard Zimpano, a former professor of psychiatry and neurosurgery, and a pastor and director of World of Faith Ministries International in Miami, Florida, here in USA. And you are, the program today is Christian Conversations. Uh, pastor Zimpano, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Pastor Jordan, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm sorry, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, you, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, with uh, uh, your staff and students at Word of Faith Ministries International Africa. Uh, it gives me joy to be able to share uh, in uh, time and ideas with the students and also with the friends of the radio listening audience. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the last time we are on the program, you were talking about the apostasy and um, how the end time church is uh, uh, fulfilling the prophecy of the Bible that at the, le at the last days, the apostasy will increase. And uh, you also mentioned about, uh, about the, uh, you mentioned the, 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 uh, the messages this day, the gospel, you know, uh, about the Pharisaic uh, approach to the gospel of Christ. Would you, uh, mind to throw more light on this? Well, let's sort of continue where we left off, if we may. Okay. Okay. And uh, the point that needs to be made to the church in general is that just because the apostasy has come does not mean that we have to participate in it. Now, what is the thing that the end time church needs to be seeking to fulfill the gospel? Well, the answer to that is in the book of Hebrews, okay? Holiness, without which no man will see God, okay? You can have all the prosperity in the world that you want, and you can get it, and sometimes Satan would be just too pleased to give it to you, mm. say, mm. uh, and uh, you know, people don't understand. Satan prospers people just the way the Holy Spirit prospers people. But the Holy Spirit prospers people after their soul prospers. Okay? And so you can go chasing these things, thinking that you're accomplishing something and that God is going to do something for you. But God's going to do nothing for you until you get in line with his word and seek the prosperity of your soul first. And then all else will be given you besides, the scripture says. Uh, the scripture says that if we do not seek holiness, no man will see God without that. Mm. Now what is holiness? Okay. Holiness is the message of the end time just the way it was the message of the gospel in the first century, huh? We don't have any holiness of our own. Mm. Any holiness that we have is imputed to us, credited to our account in heaven by Christ through his blood. Mm. Now the scripture says the life is in the blood, Ezekiel says. The life is in the blood. That's right. Right? So in the life of Christ... Okay, there is perfect life, or in the blood of Christ, I should say, there is perfect life. Okay, because his blood is perfect and he is perfect. Okay, the requirement to get into heaven is be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Well, if that's the requirement to get into heaven, then you and I have a problem, don't we? Because we're not perfect, are we? That's right. Say. And there's no way any other gospel out there, such as prosperity uh, gospel or healing gospel or any of those other things that are just part of the covenant God's going to give you, 
Okay, there's no way that those things are going to take you to the Father in heaven. Because the scripture says, without holiness, no man will see God. Huh? Okay, so if we understand that uh, position of God's, then we must understand that our mandate given by the Holy Spirit is to seek holiness. But if you don't know what holiness is, then you don't know what you're seeking after, huh? Mm. Okay? If you've got problems with your faith walk, then the first thing you have to do is take an inventory to find out where the areas of your life are that are not holy and where you have to seek God's holiness through the finished work of the cross by faith confessing circumcision of the heart of all that is unholy uh, in your behavior or in your practices, say. Uh, and then taking possession by faith and letting God manifest it into your life. Now, holiness and sanctification are identical terms in New Testament Scripture. Okay. They mean the same thing, okay? Holiness is uh, sanctification. Sanctification is holiness, okay? And holiness, by definition, means separation from the world and separation unto God, okay? Separation unto God, okay? If you're busy chasing after this gospel or that gospel to fulfill yourself, to fulfill your own needs, okay? And someone is pumping that kind of junk into your faith walk and into your life, you need to run from that kind of character as far as your little uh, feet will pitter-patter away. Say, why? They're leading you down a wrong road. Without holiness, no man will see God. Say, so the real issue then is that what we need in the end time are preachers of holiness. Huh? We don't need preachers of denominationalism. We don't need churches of the latter day saints. We need the church of the early day saints. Huh? Say, we don't need uh, preachers who preach prosperity gospel day and night, okay, and never give anyone uh, a word about sin and the devastation of what sin does in their life so they can seek holiness, okay? And they won't preach that from the, po the pulpits here in the United States. I'm sure it's true in Nigeria. Why? Because they know it'll affect the collection. Say, well, you know, I don't know about other pastors and I don't know about you. I'm not worried about the collection because Jesus is my source. Amen. Huh? And Jesus always comes through because if the ministry is truly his ministry and we are the empty vessels to let his life be manifested in us and through us, then the people who sit and watch will not have their eyes on me, but have their eyes on Christ in me. Okay manifesting his life through me, right. say, right. so that they can see that Christ is a living person and that the holiness that he is talking about comes from him alone by his living his life in us and through us, becoming an empty vessel for his use. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a different message That's right. than the end time message, say. And it's a message which is not too pleasant. People don't want to hear about sin, okay? God is doing something in every person's life, okay? He is molding you, making you, forming you, and breaking you into his image and likeness, okay? He's going to make a jewel, a diadem out of you. And there's going to be a time to come when he will lift you up and exalt you, okay? But it's in his time and not in our time doing it by self-effort, okay? The Christian faith walk is not a walk of self-effort, okay? Holiness must be developed within the person from inside out by Christ in you, the hope of glory, say. Now, if we understand that, then we can understand why we must be focused on Christ and not on all these other external things, okay? Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that Jesus said, a man's works will be tested by fire. 
Huh? So, depending on how you walk your faith walk now, that will determine what your heavenly reward will be later. Will it be gold, silver, and precious stones? Huh? Or will it be wood, hay, stubble? Do you know what wood, hay, stubble is? It's the things which pass. All right. Oh, like, like possessions. Okay. Prosperity. All right. Uh, things like that, which are going to go by the wayside. Gold speaks of divinity in typology of Scripture. Silver speaks of redemption in typology of Scripture. Okay? Precious stones speak of priesthood in the typology of Scripture. The Old Testament uh, priests wore an ephod on their chest, which was made up of 12 precious stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel, you see? So what will be tested in the fire to see if it lasts in its stands, okay? Divinity, your salvation, doesn't mean that you're divine like God's divine. It means that you have received the life of Christ, which is divine, okay? Imputed to you, okay? Two, redemption, silver, okay? If you are the redeemed of the Lord, and you know that, but you are walking that. You cannot be the redeemed of the Lord and not walk it. You cannot talk the talk and not walk the walk. I tell people that if you're going to talk the talk, you're going to have to walk the walk. You cannot talk the walk and not walk the talk. Is that clear? Amen. <laughs> okay. And so, so basically what it comes down to then is... That walking the Christian faith walk is becoming very serious about God. Mm. Becoming very serious about Christ. Christ did not go to the cross for lies. Christ went to the cross for truth. Mm. Okay? And so if we understand that, then when we are walking and practicing a faith which is filled with lies and isn't the gospel at all, and chasing after the material things of life, and not being concerned about walking in the redemp redemption which forms in us gold, silver, and precious stones, so that we can exercise our priesthood before Christ. Okay? We are kings and priests. You'd be surprised how many Christians don't know that. They don't even know their authority in Christ. You know, they spend most of their time running from the devil. See? Okay? The Bible says the devil's supposed to run from you. That's right. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus said, I give you power over serpents and scorpions and authority over all the power of the enemy. Well, authority over all the power of the enemy would include authority over Satan, wouldn't it? That's right. See? But most of the church doesn't walk in that kind of power. Most of the church does not walk in, in the holiness to see that power used. See? See? And how is the power going to be used without holiness? Hmm? Mm. And so what we see then in the ultimate scheme of things is a perversion of the gospel away from the truth of the word of God, mm. okay, into uh, a pattern of walking in the self. Mm. You see? The, pros the, the gospel of prosperity uh, is a gospel of self. Okay? Jesus' model to us is servanthood. Okay. Servanthood. Okay? Selflessness. So that we may die because Jesus uses dead men. Mm. Say, mm. Jesus can only resurrect dead men. Okay, if he's going to make someone in his image and likeness, make them, mold them, form them, and break them, the first thing he has to do is to get them to be dead to self. Okay. See, people sometimes ask me, uh, Bern, what does God really want of me? And I look at them straight in the eye, and I say, he wants you dead. <laughs> That's what he wants of you. He wants you dead. dead. He wants you out of the way mm. so that he can use you. So that he can live his life in you and through you. Now, that's the ultimate thing that holiness leads to. Divine possession. See? Again, the church talks about demonic possession. 
The church is constantly battling demons. I have news for you folks. Demonic possession is the counterfeit of the real. The real is divine possession. Say, Satan counterfeits everything that Jesus does. Okay? Jesus wants to divinely possess and live his life in and through every Christian. Okay? But it is done through surrender and dying unto self. And by the way, that's a process in all of our lives. Okay? And uh, that's part of the perfection of the soul. And so what we're seeing then is that we've got to get away from this issue of false gospels. And there are many of them, not just prosperity. Okay? There are, there are many of them. Uh, you know, uh, because there is one common denominator to all of them. They are tree of knowledge of good and evil, not tree of life. Jesus is at the tree of life. Say, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All of these things come from the knowledge that they read in the scriptures about prosperity, this and that. Now they want to start preaching the knowledge, the knowledge, the knowledge. Okay? Is there a problem with that? Well, you can feed from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you want to. Okay, but uh, the problem with doing that is you're going to die. Okay, now people will challenge me and they'll say, now wait a minute, bird, that's in the Word of God and the Word of God is holy and the Word of God uh, gives us life. Right? Well, the Word of God is holy? Right. Okay, Paul said the law was holy. He says, but through it I lusted, and lust birthed sin, and sin birthed death, and I died. That's huh? So the law is beautiful and holy, but it killed Paul. Mm -hmm. See? What is the law? The Word of God is the law. Okay? The law and the Word are similar. Okay? In the New Testament, Jesus said, the Word cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. Okay? What did he mean by that? Some of your translations say the Word cannot be divided. Okay, what Jesus was saying was Old Testament and New Testament cannot be separated. They're all law. Okay, now watch this. Jesus said the letter of the law kills. The spirit of the, uh, the letter of the word kills. The spirit of the word gives life. Huh? And so we have whole people building gospels, uh, trying to develop a false holiness through all of these things, believing that if they walk in these beliefs that it's going to please God. Mm. But man trying to please God is religion. Mm. Huh? Okay? The true Christian faith is God coming to man. That's grace. Mm. See? Man going to God to try to please him by doing this and that and showing people how they prosper because they think that it's going to please God because that's what his word says mm. and they're living his word. Okay? That's not going to please God. Okay? And the reason it's not going to please God is because it's feeding from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and wrongly applying the word. You cannot prosper until your soul prospers first. That's rightly dividing the word. Huh? Okay? So what ends up happening then in all of this, to sum it up, is the idea that... Uh, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have life, Jesus says. Mm. But it is they who speak of me and you will not come to me mm. that you may have life. Mm. Say, so life is not in doctrines. Mm. Okay? Life is not in the letter of the word. The letter of the word is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Now people think that that's evil. That's not evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the garden of God, which is in the kingdom of God. There's no evil in the kingdom of God. Mm. Huh? So what was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there for? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there to show people God's standard, which you and I cannot keep. Mm. That's why Paul says the law killed me. Okay? And he also says in Romans, I believe it's four, uh, that the law was given to show man that he couldn't keep it. Huh? But it does show us God's standard. Well, for what purpose? To point us to the tree of life. Huh? Now, you can't go to the tree of life without holiness. Okay? You can't approach the tree of life, which is Jesus, without holiness. 
And how is that done? Letting him live his life in us and through us by divine possession, see? So here is the difference between religion and the Christian faith. The Christian faith is walking at the tree of life. Religion is walking at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? This is good, do this, that's evil, don't do that. Okay, that's good, do that, this is evil, don't do this. So what ends up happening is that over time, people start walking a faith walk and they're developing self rules and regulations. I can do this, I can't do that. So I'm gonna do this and I won't do that. So what ends up happening then is you develop a code of conduct rules and regulations to walk a faith walk and when you walk that faith walk what ends up happening is that those rules and regulations lead you into religion mm. why because that's what religion is rules and regulations huh so that's transformation through self-effort from the outside in but if i go to christ at the tree of life and i get born again and receive him into my heart and I realize that the seeking of holiness is through letting him live that word in me and through me so that that word becomes a rhema revelation applied to my spirit man and soul man, then my soul prospers. Mm -hmm. huh? And if my soul prospers then, and I'm walking at the tree of life, and I'm feeding from the tree of life, then what will happen is that that transformation from the rhema word of God to my spirit man will transform me from inside out. Mm, inside out. And that's the difference between uh, walking uh, in the spirit and walking in religion. Mm. Say, mm. religion will kill you. Mm. Say, religion will destroy your life. Mm. And so if we understand those things, then we can understand that we cannot get born again, okay? That is, go over to the tree of life, eat of the fruit of the tree of life, get born again, get Jesus into our spirit, and then walk back over to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to feed from that tree for the rest of our faith walk. Mm. And we have whole people that stay in the Bible for the rest of their faith walk you know, the Bible is good. I mean, it's holy. We get rhema from the Bible, don't we? Which transforms our spirit, right? But if you're relating to the Bible alone and you're not going into the holy of holies, communing with Christ in your spirit, man, and talking to him daily and ministering to him daily and he ministering to you and listening as part of prayer, then what's going to happen? You're staying at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Say and you may think that you're doing great in your faith walk, okay? But you're spinning your wheels and you're getting nowhere because of the fact that you don't continue to feed at the tree of life. And so the church is filled with people who go to the tree of life to get saved and then go back to religion and practice religion and walk their whole lives in a shallow faith walk, not getting any revelation from Christ not understanding that he's the most exciting thing in the universe, okay? The most exciting person and that he is a real person that you can walk and talk to every day. And that if you will do that, and if you will learn to walk the faith walk correctly, okay? Letting him live his life in you and through you. Letting him minister the word to you so it becomes rhema, or uh, that is the revealed word behind the written word, which then gets into your spirit, man, okay? It will totally and it will completely transform your life, see? So the true gospel then is centered in holiness, not in all of these other peripheral doctrines of men. It's a sad commentary, isn't it? That in the last days, people can go to church on a Sunday morning and they can sit through praise and worship and listen to preaching and they cannot discern whether what is coming from the pulpit is doctrines of men mm. or whether what is coming from the pulpit is the living word being spoken to Christ. See, many sermons delivered from the pulpit are delivered from the soul man. Mm. 
rather than from the spirit man. Mm. Jesus said the things of the spirit are spirit. So if a man is truly spirit filled, when he ministers to the people, mm. it will move them. Mm. See, because it gets into their spirit man. Okay, but if he's at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and simply ministering from the soul level, mm -hmm. then all that's ever going to happen is the people sitting in the congregation are going to get ministry into their soul, but it'll never get into their spirit. Mm -hmm. And what will happen? They won't receive the holiness and they won't receive the growth. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Jesus said, the things of the spirit are spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, before we just run up... Uh, just in a minute, you mentioned something which I think is very fundamental. You said relationship with the Bible and relationship with the person of Jesus. Now, can we say, uh, and you also said, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not that it's a sin, per se, because it's right there in the kingdom, and no sin can get into the kingdom. Now, are we saying that uh, when somebody has relationship with the Bible, because most preachers, that preaches what we can call gospel of other things. They also have the Bible as their own as their own compass. Everything is taken from the Bible. But does it mean that if someone dwells so much on the Bible without taking a walk, a faith walk with the person of Jesus, can we say it's feeding from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And can we say it is pure religion? Despite the fact that it is from the Bible, but not directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. Without question, but why? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but through me. See, a lot of people want to go to heaven. Jesus never talks about bringing you to heaven in the Bible. He talks about bringing you to the Father. If Jesus can bring you to the Father, you'll get heaven besides. See, yes. that's part of this false gospel and this false doctrine. See, they chase after heaven in other words they want the frosting but they don't want the cake see mm -hmm. the father is the cake if you go after the father you'll get heaven too mm -hmm. okay the frosting comes with the cake okay. right okay but that's part of the these misconceptions and these false doctrines of men see if jesus said i am the way the truth and the life then the tree of life is a person and we need to get our holiness from that tree Say, because we don't have any of our own. He has to work it in us and through us. You see? Hallelujah. Amen? So there's no way that can be fulfilled at the, tree of, uh, at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Excuse me. At the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Huh? People say to me, where's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Burn? And they're holding their Bible in their hand. I said, you're holding it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Say, And they get shocked and they think that I'm blaspheming. Right. Mm -hmm. Because people get this religious idea that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was evil because mm. uh, Eve ate from it. No, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there to teach man. God's mm. teaching us. Mm. And it was in the garden and the garden was in the kingdom of God and there is no evil in the kingdom of God. God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there. Amen. And the proof that he intended them... Uh, to experience that tree was after they ate the Lord said in Genesis 4 or 5 see they have eaten from the tree and have become like oh us having the knowledge of good mm -hmm. and evil become like us having the knowledge of good and evil well in Genesis 1 didn't God say that he wanted to make man in his image and likeness mm -hmm. So part of the image and likeness of God is becoming like him, mm -hmm. having the knowledge of good, good and evil. evil. See? So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not evil. It just serves God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, viewers and listeners, now you know why it is possible for somebody to hold the Bible, preach from the Bible, and still preach heresy, and still preach doctrine of other things. Because although he, he knows the Bible, but he does not know the Jesus in the Bible. Because the Bible represents the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but Jesus himself represents the tree of life. This teaching continues. Uh, you can actually write or contact us to get a series of this teaching. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Zupano. Thank you.